Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to continue covering games from Limone and today I'll show you uh, my round 3 game which I'm extremely unhappy with. You're going to see why. Uh, there is so much work I have to do uh, based only on this game that it goes to show how useful it is to actually play tournament games and, and, and study your mistakes from them. Now the mistakes I made in this game are purely conceptual and uh, everything I did here, uh, everything I did wrong, I didn't do because of calculation, because of uh, lack of opening knowledge, uh, lack of endgame knowledge or, or anything. It was just conceptual mistakes on the most basic level. I did not understand the position at all. I misjudged what I had to do at two crucial uh, points and, and just got punished for it uh, pretty nicely. Okay, I'm facing a young opponent rated just slightly higher than me, but very good. Uh, I think he's much better than his rating as he proved in this tournament and uh, I, I, okay, I, I didn't know what to expect in the game, but I was pretty sure he was going to uh, be playing the Queen's Gambit. So we get uh, d4, d5, c4, c6. And in, in this position, White could play knight c3, knight f3, or e3, or something else, but he, he just went for the main line. And we got a normal semi-slav. Now, in this position, I was aware that he plays bishop to g5, and uh, I didn't want to go for any uh, passive lines with bishop e7, anything of the sort. I wanted to go for the main lines, so I played h6. Now, this is the invitation, invitation to the anti-Moscow uh, gambit, which is extremely sharp, and... Uh, in most positions, black is the one defending up a pawn, and uh, black is the one having a much scarier <coughs> position, which he could lose uh, based on one single mistake. Now, after bishop h4, black takes the pawn, e4, uh, g5, and black's defend black defends the pawn with b5. It's a clean pawn up, but uh, the black king is unsafe, the black pieces are undeveloped, and white has... A nice center and the, the knights on c3 and f3 are pretty good. If you want to know more about this, you can watch the video on the anti Moscow. This is one of the sharpest openings in chess. Okay, there are several ways for white to play from this position. Uh, the main sidelines are e5 and knight e5, and the main move is bishop to e2, which my opponent played. Now, this position, uh, every single game up to this one, even though I've never had it in a tournament game, but every single game online and training game, I played bishop to b7. And that's the move I know, uh, that's the move I've been preparing for a while. But for this game I prepared something that's rarely played uh, compared to bishop b7, which has been played about 5,000 times in high-level games. Uh, the move I played has only been played around 100 times. And that's pawn to b4. And b4 is a very tricky move if you don't know it. My opponent didn't know it, fortunately for me. Uh, I should say that knight b1 is just a bad move because black takes... Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> takes the pawn on e4 with absolutely no compensation for white. After about 10-15 minutes, my opponent played the correct move, knight to a4. And now, the point of b4, you want to trade your doubled c pawn for the very healthy e pawn, giving you the d5 square later on. So, black takes. Okay, now the way for white to prove an advantage after this, and I should say that b4 is the sharpest and the most punishing way to play, uh, the way for white to prove an advantage here is to play bishop to e5, which if you haven't seen it before, if you haven't studied the move, then you're probably not going to find it in a game. My opponent didn't find it. He played an inferior move and got a worse position on move 11 with, with white. The line after bishop e5 is really funny. So if, if, uh, if again, if you don't know it with either color, you're not going to be playing the correct moves. It's just hard to understand uh, unless you've seen it and studied it. So black plays knight to f6, defending his rook. And again, white shouldn't be taking on c4. That's kind of scary because black gets to develop. White should play knight to c5. That's the main move. And now black continues c3, trades off the pawn uh, before white could recapture with the bishop. And after white castles, there are several ways for black to play, for black to play, mainly uh, to eventually play g4 and knight d7, trade off some pieces and have a pleasant endgame, basically, uh, a pawn up. Uh, that being said, the c6 pawn could be loose and uh, eventually black may give it back, but this should be an okay position for black. Uh, 
So this is what I've studied for the game. The main sideline, uh, if not uh, uh, bishop to e5 and, and, and knight to c5, well, the most human move is bishop takes c4. And of course, I had prepared for this. It's a mistake, but it's a mistake that could happen. And it did happen. So now you take the bishop, h takes g3, and you simply develop knight to d7. Okay, here there have been a couple of games played. White plays either queen e2 or queen c2, and either plays rook d1 or castles queen side. Uh, I looked at all of that. Okay, so my opponent played queen e2, I played bishop to g7. And here he castled queenside, which is slightly uncommon. I think uh, the only game uh, played from this position, rook d1, was played. And I remember looking at that game. Okay, but he castled instead. And now I had, uh, well, two candidate moves. Uh, two most natural moves in this position are castles kingside and bishop to b7. I started getting slightly scared about d5. Because in the anti-Moscow, if d5 works, then... Usually black wins in a couple of moves after that. In this position it doesn't. So bishop d7 is actually a good move. If d5 I can just take everything. And after rook takes I can castle. And funnily enough the engine gives this position as minus 6. Which may seem unreal. But the rook is loose. The knight is loose. Uh, this bishop is amazing. The c file is open. Maybe b3 is coming. So the engine plays rook b5 here. And after queen c8 check, king b1, I think the line is queen a6 and then b3 and just knight f6 and again minus 6. May seem strange, but black's pieces, black's pieces are fine and black's king is safe. In any case, d5 isn't a problem. Instead of playing bishop to b7, which would have been okay, uh, I played a move that's just as good. I mean, it's, it's not a mistake to castle here, which I did. But conceptually, it's it's a bad decision. It's a bad decision because I have weaknesses uh, around my king, and my king is the only problem for now. Uh, I'm a pawn up. Uh, I even have a better pawn structure because the pawn on d4 is extremely weak. So what I have to do is blockade it first, so that either my knight on d5 is is traded off and the c file is opened, in in, in which case. White would get the e5 square, but that's okay. Or I can just keep my knight here, prevent any knight e5 tricks, uh, which can basically lead to an attack for white, and I can continue developing. So, for example, the, the best way, uh, if I were playing this position now, is, is to just go bishop to b7. Oh, excuse me, uh, after my opponent played rook h2. I can play bishop to b7 and just continue that way, or... I can break open the position straight away with c5, and this is trying to win the position. Now, I'm not sure I would have played c5 had I not seen uh, the lines with the engine, but seems very convincing. Bishop to b7 also seems pretty nice. Again, he doesn't have knight e5, doesn't have knight c5, everything is fine. After c5, though, which is the most forcing line, uh, if this is taken... Uh, White is lost. Uh, according to the engine, the position is minus 10 or something like that. If it's not taken, if white plays uh, correctly with, for example, rook d to h1, then simply bishop to b7. And the engine gives this as minus 3 and half. The best way for white to play is to give up the exchange. Okay. But after rook h2, uh, I played the, the worst conceptual mistake. Uh, in the game, which led to my ultimate downfall. Okay, so what I did here, uh, as soon as I played it, I realized what I'd done, and I just got slightly depressed because of my position. So what I would like to do, I would like to start a queenside attack. At the same time, I don't want to get mated on the king side. So my reasoning was, okay, let's open up the A file. How can I do that? I will play knight b6. Now, again, uh, the engine goes from minus 2.5 to minus 0 0.4. So knight b6 is still okay. The position is still slightly, slightly better for black. By no means worse for black or, or losing or anything. But what this does, it undefends the e5 square, which means that white can finally get his last piece into play without uh, having to trade it for my knight on d7. And with a knight on e5, there's pressure on f7, g6, the knight could come to g4, put pressure on h6, uh, there's pressure on c6, which isn't relevant, but still, uh, 
it's, it's a very scary position all of a sudden. And of course, my opponent takes. I took with the pawn. And I just thought, okay, this gives me enough play. Uh, and, and that's true. This, this position is better for black. However, after knight e5, I panicked. And then I didn't do anything for half an hour because I was looking at lines that all seemed bad for me. Uh, and then I played a move that just loses the game. This is move 17. I'm perfectly fine. And after the game, in my room, I was going over the game in my head. And I just thought, okay, what if I do this? Isn't this good? And I thought it was. I didn't check the game with the engine until I came home. Or actually, I, I have with my opponent. I met him in town uh, on the last day of the tournament. And he said, do you want to look at the game? I said, okay. He said, I already have it saved in chess base. So we looked at it. And I told him, okay, in this position, what if I do do this? What I found in my room. And he said, I didn't think of that. And I said, I think it's good. Let's, let's, uh, let's analyze that. And then we saw that I, were, I was correct. So the, the idea is uh, to play b5 here, which may seem strange. Chases the bishop away to b3. Now this means that the bishop cannot go to d3, which can sometimes be relevant. Uh, and also the c-file is open, so c5 is stronger. And now simply continue with queen to c7. <clears throat> if knight g4, I go rook d8. There's pressure on, on, on d4. And if this pawn is taken, I simply go king f8. Uh, Black is just slightly better. The engine here, which I didn't consider, plays queen e4. And black should just continue king f8. And after knight h6, f5. And it gives this position as winning for, for black if the pawn on h6 is, is taken. So the pawn cannot be taken. The best move is queen to h7, which doesn't make too much sense. But in any case, black is preparing c5. And after c5 happens, or the d4 pawn falls, it's just a huge attack. Okay. Now, instead of that, I played a move that makes no sense uh, because I'd miscalculated something and I just... I played it for completely wrong reasons. Even though it was a, an okay move, I, I, I didn't know why it was okay and I ended up losing in a couple of moves. I played queen f6. My idea was to provoke knight g4, get my queen to g6, and then start a counterattack. So... In this position, knight g4 was played, of course, queen g6, my opponent played uh, rook to h1. And now, again, uh, when we were looking at the game, he said, well, yeah, you can just go rook d8 here. And neither of us saw it, uh, but when we actually turned on the engine for the analysis at that point, and we saw that this position was okay, it's a simple counterattack. Like, if he isn't going to give up the exchange, he has to take with the knight, in which case I again go king f8, and the d4 pawn is hanging. After the d4 pawn falls... The bishop is loose, uh, c5, b5, rook a2. The, the, the queen is perfectly placed. This bishop is great. So if I get rook d8 here and he goes knight h6, king f8, let's say knight goes back to g4, I just go rook d4. This is just great. Again, uh, the engine says minus 5. It's not that easy to win for black, but it should be winning. And the best move for white to keep the position equal is bishop to d3, after which... The only move for black is bishop a6. Now, this is a bit hard to find, but still an okay position for both sides. And now rook takes d4. Knight h6, king f8, knight g4, and so on and so on. And, and I should be okay here because the bishop cannot really move without rook a2. And then you can see what's coming. Instead of that, I played what I'd intended to play, which is just absurd. A bishop takes d4. And now the game is over. It's just over. And my mistake was after rook h6, I thought I could play queen f5, which is what I was looking at before playing queen f6. Queen f5 is just absurd. If I play queen f5, then he plays rook h8 check, and if I take, he plays knight h6 check, which is what I saw after I played queen g6. So I, in this position, I just couldn't play queen f5. I had to play queen g7, and of course, this is losing. I knew it, but what can you do? Queen d2, I'll just show you how the game ended. Rook a5, rook h7, bishop takes b2. I, I'm losing a piece, whatever I do. Uh, if I take two rooks for the queen, I lose a bishop. If I move my bishop, I lose my queen. Uh, there's there's nothing I can do. So this is how the game ended. Uh, he played correctly, and just won a piece, and, and I resigned. A uh, new no point in, in playing on. Uh, so... 
Again, I'm extremely unhappy with this game. Uh, this line with B4 is, is really nice and I actually got exactly what I wanted after bishop takes c4, which is a mistake. And in this position, instead of castling kingside, which gives him a clear idea, as soon as I castled kingside, he played rook h2. So instead of castling kingside, if I develop first with bishop b7, maybe he doesn't play rook h2. On bishop b7, rook h2 seems like a bad move. After rook h2, maybe I don't castle kingside. Maybe I play queen c7 and castle queenside. What's the problem? There's no attack on the queen side. And the, the other uh, more important uh, problem is, is knight b6. Knight b6 is just a bad move. Uh, the position goes from winning to equal according to the engine, but for humans it's even worse than that. After knight b6 I'm giving up the e5 square and I'm giving him again a clear plan of attack. So I managed to ruin, according to the engine, a winning position for humans. I wouldn't say this is... Uh, I wouldn't say this is minus 2.8 or minus 3 as the engine says, but I still did ruin it. And I ruined it because of conceptual mistakes. I didn't miscalculate, I didn't blunder anything, I just played badly, didn't understand the position, gave my opponent a clear plan while I had no plan at all, and then when he started his attack, I didn't react properly and just got crushed. So congratulations to my opponent. I will keep studying this game for a long time uh, because I think it's very important for my development. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. See you tomorrow for round four and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.